Welcome to my presentation with the title Efficient Stress Linearization in Finite Element Analysis Continuum Models for Weld Fatigue Assessment. My name is Nick Friedel from the company CIA Simulation and Solutions GmbH, Vienna, Austria. My company has been developing a software called LIMIT. And um, the standard application for LIMIT are fatigue strength assessments of welded structures. And many of our customers deal with railway structures. And um, the picture shows um, a bogey frame, which is a representative example. Um, nowadays, our customers prefer using volume meshes rather than shell meshes because it's less effort um, simply to mesh the structure. Um, for shells, you have to do a mid-plane extraction and surface extension and um, things like that, uh, which, which are time consuming. Um, but um, modeling or meshing directly the um, volume saves time and on bogey frames you often have casted or machined parts such as the wheel set mounting or here in the, in the middle in, at the center pin and um, so it's you need some some volume elements anyway to represent the structure now in general on bogey frames we would see some full penetration welds or double-sided fillet welds which means we we don't have the danger of root cracks but uh, for some weld types, um, we have to take a closer look at the root. For example, um, in case of lap welds, in this case, lap welds join the wheel set mounting with the lower flange. And um, since um, we have like a difficult bending and deflection pattern, uh, the roots are um, exposed to large bending stresses which have to be checked against against root cracking and um, our new procedure was developed to ensure um, or to enable us to perform accurate fatigue assessments on roots for rather coarse volume models and um, I will discuss the procedure in detail um, on the next slides. First, a few meshing considerations. Um, well, if we have full penetration or symmetrical welds, we don't really model the weld details in our finite element model. Um, if we have unsymmetric welds or one-sided fillet welds, we usually add the welds because they are important um, in order to resolve the correct stiffness. Um, we have the eccentricity here and um, we get additional bending moments here at the root point due to the eccentricity. So that's why we have to include the weld throats in the model in case of lab welds and one-sided fillet welds. Now we're interested in linearized stresses along this black line, which is actually the interface between the weld and the um, continuous sheet. And um, knowing the linearized stresses is actually equivalent with knowing the membrane forces or local bending moments. Now, if we talk about linearized stresses, we don't talk about linearizing finite element stress results um, because the stress field is singular. We have here a, like an initial crack in the structure. So this point here is singular and we cannot simply linearize the stresses from the finite element analysis. Um, you can see here that this element, for example, has very high stresses here at the at the corner point, and it's not even part of the weld itself, but it contributes to the overall forces transferred through the interface. Yeah. So, 
Um, the way to do it is actually to use the nodal forces of all elements that have contributions to the load transfer and, and use this information in order to overcome the problems such as mesh size and um, singularities and things like that. This slide shows a typical mesh we would like to use. I was talking about like coarse mesh. Um, I would say this mesh gives at least as good results as shell modeling with the advantage that we also capture local stiffness details, which would be difficult with the shells. The weld itself is tied to um, sort of continuous sheets and it has a conforming interface towards the casted part. So it's actually meshed through at this position. Okay, so that was the mesh. Now, what does the whole linearization procedure look like? So we start off with a linearization mesh. Um, the whole weld interface actually is bounded by two edges. The red one is the root edge and the blue one is the toe edge. And between those two edges, we generate quadrilaterals. And at each node of, of this mesh, we have three unknown traction stresses. Those um, stresses or the, these stress components contribute to the forces transmitted um, through this weld interface. And um, it depends, well, the, the indices depend on on the local coordinate system, which is oriented in such a way that the one direction always is parallel to the weld. Sigma 3, 3 actually is the out of plane direct stress. Sigma 1, 3 is the shear in longitudinal direction and Sigma 2, 3 is the shear in lateral direction. Each quadrilateral can perform a bilinear stress interpolation and um, while well, adding up all these these elements we can um, describe linearized stress fields in our um, interface this slide actually shows how we define a system we can solve so we start um, with the definition of a stress interpolation and defining our unknowns. Um, sigma, sigma in this case is actually a vector of all unknown traction stresses. And uh, what we do is um, we take these interpolated stresses and we use the original surface mesh of our finite element model and we use Gauss um, integration and standard finite element um, formulations to integrate these surface stresses in, uh, to consistent nodal forces. Yeah? So that's written here. Um, so in each red point, we get three forces. Um, X, Y, Z, for example, in global coordinate system. So this is described here. And in order to solve the system, because A is not a square matrix, we apply a least square approach, which means we simply multiply both sides with the transpose of A and solve for sigma. Now, in case of singularities, which is the case for, for example, the one-sided fillet welds. We have um, large force contributions of elements which are connected to the interface only by a line, only by an edge. Yeah? And um, this surface-based formulation is, is not able to capture these edge effects of singular edges. That's why we added an iterative correction for root and toe edges. And um, 
what do we get? We get smooth and nice stress distributions. Here on the right side, you can see sigma 3.3, which is the direct stress normal to the interface. And on the left side, for example, longitudinal shear um, along the world interface. Um, we checked with different finite element commercial solvers like Abacus, Nastran, and ENSYS. We um, checked for different uh, formulations, first order, second order, hexahedral elements, TET wedges. We used tight interfaces, conforming interfaces, which means mesh through and even solid to shell interfaces. And the error margin is always between one and 3% with the lower value um, for mesh through higher order elements. Yeah, so we have a very robust um, system which can be used with almost any element formulation. And what can we do at the end of the day? Um, now, we have the stress distribution and we have the integral values, which means the moments and forces. Originally, um, the stresses were calculated here in this, in this plane, but um, it's, it's straightforward to calculate linear stress distributions in other cutting planes through the, the well throat. And usually for fatigue analysis, you would have to um, calculate the stresses here at the, at the shortest, shortest distance, which is this A dimension. Um, now, once we have these stresses, we can, we can compare them with permissible values of standard fatigue codes. For example, IIW or FKM guideline, um, you would find some details that uh, look pretty similar to, to this picture, and uh, in this case for steel, um, they suggest a FAT class of 71. Um, and off we go, we can run and, and perform a fatigue analysis based on these SN curves. Um, a second way to to solve the problem actually is to use section forces and section moments um, and use these results as weighing factors for um, not stress approaches or let's say detailed 2D slices for different notch stresses which were calculated for different loading patterns. Yeah? So, um, you, we take these values, we use the weighing factors, sum up all the stresses, and at the end we get um, very accurate stresses at the root point or at the toe points. So this is like an internal sub-model, but without dealing really with, with all that um, data manipulation we need, you need for sub-model. And at the end, we get the final result, which usually is what we call the degree of utilization, which describes the um, amplitude divided by the permissible amplitude, including some safety margin. Um, <clears throat> with limit, it is um, a very simple um, to or clearly visible where you have problems. We have color-coded degrees of utilization within the section of the weld. And for example, here we have here in this in this cylindrical part, we have areas with a degree of utilization above one. Um, here in this area where the, the wheel set mounting is, is welded to the to the frame, uh, we are fine. So all our root points have degrees of utilization below one. And um, we simply have to consider some improvements here at this position. We have reached the end of my presentation. I hope um, I was able to draw your attention to our new method. Um, if you're interested in more information, um, please visit our homepage, limitfatigue.com. We would be happy to provide you with free trial licenses. And um, uh, for the time being, thanks for your attention and enjoy the conference.